I'm glad you've chosen to be back with us and you'll take 10, 12 minutes here to refresh yourself and to learn something and to maybe get an answer. Many times uh, I've just turned on the television at the right time or turned on the podcast at the right time and just a moment got a word that helped sustain me. And we talked with Bishop Murray Galloway uh, yesterday about the strength of of what might come from being called of the Lord and how often your spirit and your heart have to align with the fact that somebody has to pay the bills and that you have to walk forward in bivocationalism and in entrepreneurialism, paying for the ministry that God has called you to. But on the bright side, success does come in that and it becomes less and less until you are managing what God has given you. But today, I want to go to a, a serious problem that you and I face as ministers all the time, and that is the, the, the fact of being led by God. Uh, Jesus said it pretty accurately, my sheep know my voice, and another voice they will not hear. Uh, as many as are the sons of God, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And we, we hear all about leading, letting, how are you led? You know, I'm being led. Uh, uh, but I don't believe God does like Moses with a, with a burning bush, bam, uh, before you're on your way. Mm -hmm. I believe your faith leads you to make a, a beginning, and you can't get the future to come to you till you step into the future. And I know that I've watched your life, and I've watched how, how that's worked with you. And I'd like for you to just address that, not with examples, but address that from your heart. How you how how he leads you to study, how you find your sermons, how how you counsel with people, and just 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 spend this segment. I'm going to sit here and listen, and you take the whole uh, ten minute structure, and let's just tell us how do you follow the leading of the Lord in your life. Well, when I first began to pastor, and when I was 21 years old, uh, I was so stressed out from Sunday to Sunday because I thought my life depended on this Sunday's message. And the greatest lesson that I ever learned is that God knows months, years, and lifetimes in advance what's going to go on down the road. And, and the second, so, so I'm a planner, mm -hmm. a big planner. Everyone, everyone should have a 10 year, a five year, a three-year, a one-year, a six-month, a 90-day, a one-month, a one-week, a day planner. Yeah. You should have a plan. You've got to break it down. I admire that. Okay? And uh, I'm a big planner. I have the famous spiral notebook that I work out of every day. The reason I have a notebook is very simple. It costs 79 cents, and I can lose that as quickly as I can the $40 day planner. Okay, But I always have my notebook, and I always have a plan. But the second thing, uh, and, and for, for instance, talking about planning um, for, for preaching, I plan months in advance. I work every day on my preaching plan, but I'm planning months in advance. Before you guys go off on me about that, God knows six months from now who's going to be sitting in that service. Okay? That took so much stress off of me in planning to preach. Okay? Second thing about preaching and studying is I do not study to preach. I study. That's good. Okay? And, and my preaching comes out of my study. Okay? And uh, uh, somewhere in all of that, because this was not planned and I don't have an outline, I steal from everyone. Mm -hmm. Secular, church world, if I find a nugget, if you read a whole book and get one nugget out of it, it was worth the read. And I, I, uh, everyone that knows me knows I love to cut up and laugh, but I think, I think it's very important. Think through what you're doing. If you don't have a plan, they used to tell us in the insurance business, last segment, they used to tell us in the insurance business, plan your work, work, work your, your plan. plan. If you don't have a plan, it's like spinning your wheels. If you don't have a destination or a purpose for what you're doing. Okay, so as far as sermon planning, that helped me. The flip side of that is 
our success over long term, I believe, sorry, Bishop, I have to talk no, with my hands. No, bring it on. Uh, our success is determined by our daily agenda. What do I do every day that is consistent? I pray every day. I study every day. I'm giving you Murray's points, okay? I communicate every day, and I encourage every day. That's my big four. I pray, I study, I communicate, I encourage. I believe God's called me to encourage. I don't need to get started on that because that's not our subject, but that's what I try to do every day in some way. And you can do that. We can all do that. With a text, with, with all the things that we do, just reach out and encourage someone. As far as long term, with everything I just said, I don't think this is contradictory. But you can make the best plans, the best laid plans of mice and men. And somewhere in all of this, you still have to trust that God is going to, you know, God, first of all, has the freedom to adjust my plans. And then God has the ability to make up the difference. Because there are times in your life with the best laid plans, the 10-year, the 5-year, the 3-year, and my life is nowhere near today what it was three years ago. But I had a plan and I am working. This is my philosophy. I do everything within my power every day. And over a year's time, a three-year period, you can look back and see the progress that you've made. A lot of people are sitting around waiting on the burning bush experience. I want God to just miraculously change my situation. Right. I need to win the lottery before I can do anything. And I don't work on that philosophy at all. I believe that I should do everything in my power every day. And then, of course, there are those things that I can do nothing about. And I have to trust God for them. That's the essence of faith. I'm going to continue to do my best and God will do the rest. And out of this comes the leading. Yes. Out of this you find God's steps for you. Yes. Uh, and I have found out uh, that, that doors open through relationships. Okay. God shows me, gives me opportunities through relationships with people. A, a, a great example, and I won't call his name because I do not uh, have his permission to at this point, but God began, I felt God began speaking to me just in the last 30 days. Uh, I mean, it's something you and I have talked about, but God began really dealing with me about taking a, a big step and stretching me uh, to go and, and do a live webcast. Well, I don't even know how to plug things in to do a live webcast. <laughs> Uh, and so, and so uh, I said, uh, uh, who do I know in my life that can help me? Don't be afraid to ask for advice either. I would say that to anyone when God starts leading you in these, you know, God, when God leads you, you know it because he always leads you to do something you don't know how to do. Correct? Uh, and you have to reach out. And so I began to reach out and I called a friend, a friend of mine that, that, uh, we have never even spent a, a lot of time together. We, we, it's, we've always been in a group of people. And I said, can you help me with this uh, webcast? And he says, well, I can do better than that. I'm going to send you this whole system. And I, for me to be speechless is a miracle. I didn't know what to say. And, and I was so uh, sorry, but I, uh, I was so dumb. I didn't even know what we had just been given. I made him tell me again so I could write it down. And I went to my 17-year-old daughter and said, help me look this up and find out what's just been donated to Homefront Ministries. Okay? And, uh, but God, uh, God, leads through, uh, God leads me through relationships um, and through, uh, I don't know if I have a better word for this, but, but when I've done all that I can do, and I've reached that point that, that there's nothing I can do. The Bible t uh, tells us we're not to be slothful, okay? So I do all that I can do. When I reach that point that I've done all that I can do, God always opens a new door 
and shows me direction. The direction. Part of direction is recognizing open doors. And the hardest one for me is uh, recognizing I need to let some doors close behind me mm -hmm. also. I think and that uh, Henry Cloud, the great, the great writer, said that. He said, good can't begin until bad ends. Yeah. And learning to close the door on yesterday, you can't walk into the future. Right. And uh, I've told many pastors and many people, and I tell you right now, that there is a strength in closing a door, getting into a dark hallway, and watching God open a new doorway to make that strong. Well, there's two things that I've always taught ministers, and I've, I've taught this to Murray, that each day you should preach to yourself. <laughs> and each day you should pray that your name would come up on the lips of those that God is going to use to bless you today. Yeah. Sinner or saint alike, it doesn't yeah. matter, president or pauper, put my name upon the lips of those that will bless me. Now, it may take some time to work through that as that, that, that time that their, your name came up on their lips comes to you, but it will come. And the other is to pray every day that men will do for you what they normally would not do. You'll know these things are working because people will call you and say, you know, we were just talking and your name came up. And, and, and they'll say, mm -hmm. they'll say, they'll say, you know, I don't usually do this. The banker will say, I don't usually do this, but today right. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make the exception. Or the new lease on the what whatever it is that you're needing. And and uh, my prophetic feelings are flowing right now, but this segment's come to a close. And I want you to know it's a good day for you. It's a good day for you to have been listening. The Lord is leading you. God bless you. Come on back for the next segment of Take 10, and we'll spend that time with you. Uh, there's several other things I want to talk to Murray about, and I know you're going to want to hear. Bishop Murray Galloway, Homefront Ministries. Just Google him. You'll find it. God bless you.